This is the most time-consuming task, definitely. Um, it is easier to do an import process if you are very uh, comfortable with the import process, but we will walk through the manual process, and then we will also take a look at the um, import process. We're going to enter the chart for the general fund. We are going to enter it, as I said, manually. In addition, in QuickBooks, you can use classes for departments in the setup process. As I mentioned, there are pros and cons with doing this. We have decided that we are not going to use classes for a, a much more condensed financial statement. And the reports that you get out of QuickBooks will differ depending on whether you use the classes or do not use the classes. So for us to get started, we're going to click on List, and we're going to click on the chart of accounts. Automatically, you see there's a couple of accounts here. Caution, do not delete them. They are here because QuickBooks uses them in some way or form or fashion. We're going to be adding accounts to these. Um, and how do you know what to add? Well, the uniform chart of accounts that can be found at DCA's website, is, and there's a second edition as well as a 2001, 2011 update, um, and that's how you actually decide what you're going to enter. You'll notice that after we click on the list in the chart, now the toolbar is at the bottom of QuickBooks Pro 2013, and we will click on Account, and then we will click on New. Here is the link for the Uniform Chart of Accounts at DCA's website, in case you didn't know where that was. We're going to get started entering a checking account. Some people say we should set up all of the chart, but I don't believe you should set up all of the chart because many of the accounts, especially the balance sheet accounts, assets and liabilities, you may or may not use for your city. So I recommend that you set up um, a core amount of your chart that you will be um, using and then go back and activate those and add those as you see that you'll need them. It's normally best to go to the uniform chart of accounts in your setup process because if you go to your budget reports, your budget reports may not be using the uniform chart descriptions. And so that is why it's best to go to the uniform chart and then to compare it to your budget reports that you've been using and your financial reports that you've been um, generating and see where the differences actually are. If you start with your internal reports, sometimes you really will put things in there and set those up in a way that is really not compliant with the chart. So it's a good time as you're setting up QuickBooks to make the switch and go ahead and go over to the chart of accounts since um, the uniform chart has been being required since the late 90s. So this is our uniform chart and our um, checkbook, and we're going to enter the cash account, which is 11 1100. The first thing that happens when we do um, list, chart, and then new account is it asks us what type of account this is. For a checking account, we will click bank. Um, the majority of the accounts that you are going to be setting up will be in the income or expense category, um, but the checkbook actually will be inside the bank account. Then you'll be prompted to enter your routing number and your bank account number. Um, these come at the bottom of your check. Um, and you enter the bank account number and the routing number. And then you click on the Enter Opening Balance. The Enter Opening Balance, the reason you're clicking on that and helping that is that you can um, you want to use this in order to reconcile your bank statement. So the, when you enter the opening balance, the best time to navigate to QuickBooks is at the end of a fiscal year. The end of fiscal year, if you're a junior in, that's a good time to start it in July. If you're a December year in, which many of you may be, January is a good time to start it. So if you're a December year in, you would go to your December 31st bank statement and you would find your opening balance 
And here is where you would put statement ending date 1231, um, and your statement ending balance would actually be the um, balance that is on your bank statement, the ending balance on the bank statement. And of course, if you are starting this as of July 1, you would go to your June 30th bank statement, depending on when you are starting your fiscal year. We're going to look at adding another account to the uniform um, to the chart inside QuickBooks. We take a look at the uniform chart. This is the revenue section of the uniform chart found on DCA's website. The asterisk in the chart means that this level of detail is required if you actually receive that type of revenue throughout the year. When you're setting up your revenues and expenditures, it's important to think about how you want your financial statements to group accounts. Setup of accounts will dictate how some of the groupings are done. In QuickBooks, if you want your monthly statements to subtotal by categories, you must use subaccounts in your chart setup. For example, 31.0000 might be taxes as the category, and then there are other accounts underneath them that are subaccounts. So we're going to see how setting up a few of these might look, and we're going to first start with the headings and then the subaccounts that go underneath them. Back inside QuickBooks, we still go to List and we go to Chart and we do the New. But this time, because we are setting up revenue accounts, um, we are going to click on the Income button. And when we click on the Income button, we will click on Continue. It brings up now our account type that we're going to first set up, remember, are the headings, which would be the taxes. And in the upper right-hand corner, we would put the number 31.0000. This time, we're going to set up the general property tax category. And we're going to make it a sub-account of the 31 taxes revenue. So what this means is the general property tax will group under tax revenue. And in the upper right hand corner we will put 31.1100 and again we will save and close. So in these two examples all we did was set up our header of taxes revenue and then we set up the general property taxes underneath. You see that there is an indention here. What that indention means is that the 31.0000 is what we call a non-posting account, which means it's a header and a place value. We're not going to really enter transactions there. How do you know what the groupings are? The Uniform Chart of Accounts groups our revenues into nine different categories. Taxes are 31 category. The licenses and permits are 32. Intergovernmental, 33. Charges for services, and you can see the remainder of the list. These are the nine categories that the Uniform Chart has actually established. So we went in and set up a few based on the uniform chart of accounts. And we basically grouped them in the 31s. You'll see some of the revenue accounts we set up. And so you wouldn't actually record or post anything to 31-.0000. You wouldn't post anything to 33.0000 intergovernmental. Those are uh, in, enable you when you get further down the road for your reports for things to be grouped together. So your federal government grants, your federal government payment in lieu of taxes, and your state government grants, all of those will be grouped under your intergovernmental revenue category. Now we're going to move away from the revenue side, and we're going to go into the expenditure side. The expenditure side requires a little more effort in the setup process. 
because the very first thing that has to happen is you have to establish your departments or functions. Departments roll into functions. There are nine broad functions, and we've got two examples here of departments. And the asterisks mean that this is the minimum level of detail that you can maintain in your chart if you supply this service. Of course, if you don't have a police department, you're not going to set up a police department. If you don't have highways and streets, you're not going to set up highways and streets. But we, we've used two examples so that you can start to see. Police is a um, function inside of public safety. Highways and streets is a department inside our function inside the public works. Typically, you'll see that smaller cities have fewer departments. Larger cities, of course, have, much, um, have many more departments as you go through a chart setup. Here are the function groupings, just like we saw for the revenue side. They are driven by the first digit. There are nine different functions that the chart groups things in. The general, fun general government function will start with a one. The judicial function will start with a 2. Public safety will start with a 3. Public works with a 4, and so on. Before setting up QuickBooks expenditures, the very first thing you should do is figure out what departments you want to set up and functions, um, because that will drive a good bit of your setup process. Again, just like we did on the revenue side, you need to set up your headings or your groupings before you set up all of the individual line items as your sub-accounts. So we're going to use the highways and streets as our example. Now, one of the things you will notice is in the right-hand corner, we didn't put a number this time. We basically put the number 4200 inside the um, actual name. This is a workaround in order to do what we want it to do on the financial reports. This is one of the ways that you can actually make your financial reports look the way you want them to look. Then we will go and we will set up the um, various line items that you're accustomed to seeing and charging things to in your day-to-day -day operations. And we're going to, in this example, set up salaries and wages. And we set up salaries and wages, but this time we click sub-account so that we know that we make it a sub-account of the street, the highway and street function. Again, we've done a workaround. We have not used an account number in the upper right-hand corner. The account number is in the account name. We've entered several so that you can start to see how the groupings actually work. Um, you'll see the 51 category is our personal services category. That's for our, all your salaries and your benefits. Your 52 category is for your professional services or your purchased and contracted services. The 52 category is where you, you pay a lot of your vendors related to the services that they provide. So this is all underneath the 4200 category for highways and streets. You can see that this would be a time-consuming task. Therefore, some folks like to set up everything inside a spreadsheet and then import it into QuickBooks. If you um, are accustomed to using Excel and enjoy using Excel, then that oftentimes is a quicker alternative for you. So we just want to show you how that might could work. There's a, this is what the spreadsheet would look like just for the 4200s. Colons are uh, what separate the subgroupings. So you see the 4200 highways and streets, and then a colon, and then you see any other account, and then a colon, and then the detail accounts that you may want to set up, depending how much detail you actually want to capture. Just remember the chart, the minimum level of detail you're required to do is at the asterisk level. You can always have more detail if that's what you choose to do, but the asterisk level is actually what you um, are required to do. And again, in the type here, you would have your expense um, for the various expenditure accounts that you set up. 
And just a refresher, these are the categories inside each department. So for example, inside streets and highways, you would have different categories of expenditures or groupings of expenditures. 51, again, would be those personal services and our people, and 52, the purchased and contracted services. The supply category would be in the 53s, and then capital outlay would be in the 54. Now, um, if you're unsure kind of what accounts go where and how all of that works, basically, again, the uniform chart of accounts has a detailed description for every category and for every line item inside the chart. 